If you are new to our channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for receiving latest updates on exams, research positions and guidance videos. So let's start the video. Hello everyone, my name is Shorbojit Dotto and I'm an integrated PhD student here in JNCSR. I did my bachelor's in science, BSc in physics from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. And then I joined JNCSR as an integrated PhD student in material sciences. So a few words on what this program is all about. So you see that in physical sciences, we tend to study nature and natural phenomena, right? And we do it in three major portions. We study about the cosmic world, the material world and the elementary world. The cosmic world deals with planets, stars, our favorite black holes, cosmic radiations and all that. The material world deals with practically all that we see around us. And sometimes we don't even see it, but it has some manifestations in which we experience the nature of reality. It answers questions like, what is the origin of magnetism? Why glass is transparent? What is so special about refractive index that light bends when it changes and all that? The elementary world deals with the fundamental particles which constitute our universe. So nowadays, it's not just protons, electrons and neutrons. We have gone even more deep. So you have quarks, gluons, Higgs boson, leptons and all that. It is astrophysics which studies the cosmic world. It is condensed matter physics which studies the material world. And it is high energy physics or particle physics which studies the elementary world. Now it turns out that to answer the questions which condensed matter physics poses to you, it is not just sufficient to use the tools of physics. So sometimes you have to use the tools from engineering sciences, especially from mechanical and metallurgical engineering, because you have to design sophisticated experiments. Sometimes you have to borrow certain tools from chemistry, mainly physical chemistry. Sometimes you have to borrow from mathematics, sometimes from computer science. So it is convenient and better if you encompass all these subjects under one single umbrella, which is called material sciences. So JNCSR has an amazing program in material sciences. It is an integrated PhD program, which means you can do both your masters as well as your doctorate under this program. The master's degree is an MS degree, not an MSc degree, an MS degree. And the doctorate program is obviously a PhD degree. Now JNCSR also gives you an option of exiting this program after your MS but that will take three years. But I think it's a win-win situation for you because they will give you an MS degree and not an MSc degree. An MS degree is typically of three years as opposed to MSc, which is of two years. Just like BS is of four years and BSc is of three years. If you want to know what is the difference between BS and BSc, MS and MSc, then I'll say that BS, MS, these are more research-oriented programs and BSc, MSc, these are more academic-oriented programs. Now, JNCSR admits students into this program through interviews. So the criteria to get an interview call is either write IIT Jam and get a reasonably good rank under 500 maybe or apply through JNCSR's own aptitude test. So if you have a reasonably good rank, then you will get a direct interview call. If you don't for any reason or if you have not appeared for IIT Jam, then you can apply through JNCSR's own aptitude test. During the pandemic this year, JNCSR will conduct an online aptitude test. So it will be of 20 minutes duration and it will have questions from physics, chemistry and mathematics. There might be a time crunch in this examination. That means that you have to answer a lot of questions within 20 minutes. So you must work on your speed and the level of the questions will not be very different from IIT Jam. So you can practice the previous year questions of IIT Jam for this examination. Now JNCSR admits students into this program, not just from physics background, but also from engineering background as well as chemistry and mathematics. So if you are a physics student, then practice chemistry and mathematics from your plus two level syllabus. If you are a chemistry student, then practice physics and mathematics from your plus two level syllabus. Similarly, if you're a mathematics student, then practice physics and chemistry from your plus two level syllabus. Now, after this, some students will be selected from IIT Jam and some students will be selected from this online aptitude test. And then all of them will be interviewed by the panel of JNCSR. The interview will also be online during this pandemic via Skype. Now let us see what are the questions that they might ask you in the interview. At least I'll share my experience, what they asked me in my interview. So there were two rounds of interviews in GNCSR. The very first one was a preliminary interview and then there was a final interview. So I'll share my experience in both of these interviews. In the preliminary interview, they asked me two areas from which they can ask questions. So I told them that I would be expecting questions from classical mechanics and electrodynamics. 
So they started off with classical mechanics. The very first question which they asked me was whether I've seen a simple pendulum or not. Now the fact about a simple pendulum is no one has ever actually seen it because it's an idealization of a real pendulum. You have to make these assumptions to actually define what a simple pendulum is. And then you will get a differential equation like this. Then again, you have to do small angle approximation for sine theta to get sine theta equal to theta. And then you will get the famous differential equation for a harmonic oscillator. And from this, you can get t equal to 2 pi root over L by G, the well-known formula. So you have to do all these to actually define what a simple pendulum is. So I believe this was the answer which the panel was looking for. Next, they asked me to draw the phase space diagram of a simple pendulum. So simple pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator. So the phase space will be an ellipse. P here represents momentum and X position in 1D, obviously. Next, they asked me to draw the phase space diagram of a simple pendulum if I put the simple pendulum in a water tub. Now, the fact here is if you put it in a water tub, viscous forces will come into play. So the simple pendulum will no longer execute simple harmonic oscillation. It will now execute damped harmonic oscillation. So you will have a phase space diagram like this. This is an spiral. Next question was from electrodynamics. So what they asked me was, I have a conducting sphere placed in a uniform electric field. So calculate the potential due to the sphere at any random point. Now this is a very well known problem solved in the book by David J. Griffiths on electrodynamics. You can check it out from there. The solution looks something like this. It comes from the Laplace's equation and you have to do a very complicated algebra for it. I was lost in the algebra a bit and then the panel helped me out. Next, they asked me what is the structure of graphene. So graphene has a honeycomb structure like this. You have carbon atoms and these are molecular bonds. This was fairly an easy question, but you have to go through the basics of solid state physics in order to answer questions like these. Next, they asked me to draw the graph of a Gaussian function. Now, they did not directly tell me that uh, draw the graph of a Gaussian function. What they told me was draw the graph of e to the power minus x square. Now, we know it for a fact that e to the power minus x square is a Gaussian function. So the graph looks something like this. This is a very well-known function, but you might not get well-known functions like this. In one of my interviews in the ISERS, they gave me a very weird looking function and I had to draw the graph for it. So I'll suggest you practice drawing graphs for any random function that you get. Then it was the call for the final interview. The final interview went a bit longer. So I won't really discuss the answers which I gave in the final interview because they were asking for elaborate answers. I'll discuss the questions. So the very first question was in a room of 20 meter into 40 meter. These are the dimensions of the room. Uh, one has to arrange an examination in the pandemic situation. Now, following the social distance norms, the distance between each student should be two meter. Then how many students can be accommodated at max? Now, this was a very tricky question. I could not answer it. But later on, I figured out that uh, to actually answer this question, one has to maximize the density in the room. So the maximum number density for students will only happen if you arrange them in a hexagonal closed lattice formation. So this is actually a question from solid state physics given in this weird fashion. So you have to actually arrange the students in HCP to actually get the right answer. Then they asked me what are electromagnetic waves and give a few applications of them. This was a fairly easy question. Then they asked me what are Pauli matrices and uh, then they asked me to calculate their eigenvalues. Now Pauli matrices are not typically taught in undergraduate courses. But you can check it out what Pauli matrices are. Finding out eigenvalues is a simple task. You can do it. The next question was, if you know the root of 100, which is 10, then how can you calculate the root of 99 without a calculator? Now, this question can be answered by using the Taylor series expansion. I'll suggest you practice questions like this because this will help you in the interviews. These are very typical questions which are asked in more or less all the interviews. So that was all for my final interview. A few tips before you actually appear for the interview. Number one, stay healthy before the interview. Drink plenty of water, have food and maintain your hygiene. Number two, don't try to outsmart the panel when the interview is going on. 
So if you're not sure about anything, just say that you do not know and they'll help you. So it's not really the fact that whether you can actually answer the question or not. What they essentially look into is the approach that you take in answering the question. Point three, prepare at least two areas from your own background, which are your strong points and also work on how to draw graphs of various functions. Again, prescribe a book in this regard. There is a book called Play with Graphs by Amit Agarwal. You can purchase that book or download it if you want and then you can go through it. This will definitely help you in your interview. So that will be all for this video. Thank you so much for your time. All the best for the online aptitude test for those who are appearing and the interviews. Waiting to see you in GNCSR and become a scientist. All the best.